G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today's video is about the Helicon Tech Summit 40 litre backpack. This is the Helicon Tex Summit 40 litre backpack. Now I've put around 500 kilometres on this now. Uh, walking on the Bibbleman track, doing some overnighters, some weekends. So I thought I'd let you have a look at it. Like I said, it's a 40 litre pack from Helicon Tex. It's a lightweight uh, one they say it's about 1.2 kilos which is pretty lightweight for their packs it's a light Cordora fabric they never said what rating it is so I can't say whether it's 5 or less or 750 plus or whatever roll top now I've always looked at these in the past and I thought nah no I wouldn't like them but I found since buying this I love the roll tops so much easier to get in, less chance of water or dirt getting in the pack to your gear. Velcro in the middle, do the Velcro up, turn it at least three times and do it back up and that's all secure. That easy, none of the business about pulling your cord and pulling your next cord, bringing your lid over, doing the buckles up, just roll it up, do it up. I've been converted to roll tops. I really do like that. To get on the inside as well as the roll top, we have an access zip here, which is under this you can see. Corns, about that, about three quarters, four fifths of the way down. So if you want anything out your pack, you don't have to go under the top, just unzip it, grab what you want, zip it back up ready to go. All the zips are YKK zippers. We have the weather strip over the front to guard it. It's not the waterproof one, but they'll good chance they'll hold at least 99% or more of the rain out. Zips, no trouble with them. Nice pull, they've got the shrink wrap rubber on the paracord, so even with gloves on, you'll have no trouble grabbing that. And as you saw me undo, we have the beaver pocket, they call it, the expandable one, which you can fit a helmet in there, easy, and that's about undoing it all the way. You can fit your rain jacket in there, uh, you can fit, drop your tent in there if it's wet, let it dry as you're walking. They've got the light molly webbing, they call it, coming down here, so you can attach a carabiner with your cup or anything you want in there. Really, really nice little features that is. They have the same on either side too. So you can add pouches to it. Buckles, good quality, the Rugen lightweight bucket buckles. Now that pocket's got plenty more room to go in, so you can put more things in there if you wish. This is the, which one's this? The Helicontex Poncho, fits in there. I've got my little rubbish bag to put my rubbish in, and obviously there's plenty of room that stretches. These have been actually, we've got one skag here, but this has been caught on the bush when I've been walking through. I've said over 500 kilometers, and I think that's the only point you can see that's been caught there. So for what it is, it's fairly hardy. Put it back in there, out of the way. Give you another idea how big the pockets are. I have my pot kit in here, which is the ever new solo pot set, which is a 750ml pot for my cup, lid, gas cylinder in there, all fits in that side pocket nice and easy. And I have also pushed down my water filter beside that, 
and because it's stretchy it hasn't actually gone inside or oh, it has very slightly but it's not got to the point where a lot of them are we've got the uh, material pockets here they force the actual load inside the pack so you're losing some of the actual space inside when you use these but these ones you lose very little and as soon as you put anything on the inside it pushes this back out with a stretch sorted it's the handle come up ah my spoon's got stuck behind there it is so yeah like i said when you put anything inside it'll push it out and it'll stretch that pocket and again you can see the light while you in to attach a pouch to and all these straps they're all adjustable and they've got the velcro so once you've got the length you want you can roll it up hold it in place so you don't have any straps hanging around and uh, scagging and getting caught on the trees or the bush as you're walking through the bottom still thicker than this but only a little I did send Helicon text a message asking what rating this uh, Cordova fabric was and they never got back to me and that's about five, six weeks ago I sent that message. So if they ever get back, I'll let you guys know. I'll put a link, uh, I'll put a comment down in the uh, section below and you can see there only if they get back to me unless I find out another way and then I'll put it down in the description box. Turning it around. A nice grab handle. Your hydration port comes at the top here. I've added the uh, hydration hot clip there. A little bit big for this because the actual webbing on these is a bit smaller than the normal one inch, but it does the job. Shoulder struts. I don't know about what's that, about three inches, two and a half inches across the top, uh, half. Yeah, say 10 12 mil in thickness. With this material over it allows a bit of ventilation. I'm very surprised how comfortable these shoulder straps are. I, I love all my weight on the hips, but I just walked here, which has been in three, three kilometers, and I hadn't done my belt up or I hadn't tightened it up. I'd done it, clipped it, but I hadn't pulled it tight. So all the weight actually was on the shoulders and I didn't notice. So maybe if I'd done another five or six kilometers, started to feel it by then. But over the three kilometers, I didn't feel the thing with them, didn't notice at all. There is load lifters. So it gives you a bit of adjustment to lift these straps up off your shoulders. So allowing the actual waist belt to take the weight of it all. As you see, I've attached my normal pouch to the front there with my phone and GPS tracker in there. Uh, I've added my watch to the chest strap and a small carabiner on that one too for when I'm carrying my poles and my camera. So my, that will click, uh, my poles will click in there, the hands, and I put them down the side out of the way if I'm not using them. My camera, I just hook onto this carabiner I normally carry on any of my packs. Hip belt, again, you've got the Rujin buckles, really, really nice buckles. And they've got them shaped, I don't know if you can see, they're actually curved. So when they're sitting against you, they're more of a comfortable fit. They're not so much of a straight line digging in your belly. So that's a nice touch, having them curved and rounded off. Real good buckle still. Lightweight. And they're not going to come undone, not for a long time. A lot of wear uh, to ruin them. Back panel. Now this was a surprise for me, this one. It's, what they've done here, is, I think is fantastic. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but the panel isn't flat, it's like waves. It goes like that, up and down, to allow your back to breathe more. Now your back is going to perspire, but nowhere near as much as it would do. Like I said, I've done over 500, uh, about the 500, actually over 500 kilometers with this pack now. I forgot I've been away last weekend too. You can feel where I've been perspiring on it, but when I got my back straight, 
I can also feel the air coming down between these pieces and that goes all the way down to the lumbar section that actually is right down at the bottom so the sweat's been here my mid back this part here as well allows air to flow down into there which makes a big difference because because I've got this mesh and the mesh is both sides so the air's coming in or as you're walking if it's pushing it's going to be sucking air in or pushing the hot air out it's really really nice hip belt a little bit thinner not much thinner but a little bit thinner than the shoulder straps but the nice finish on the edge where it's fairly stiff but in the main uh, belt itself you got a contour stitch in there that actually hugs your hips so you get some of these where the, uh, the hip belts are so hard they don't actually wrap around your hips properly so it gets that rubbing and these actually hold just hug your hips so there's a lot less rubbing on there well I don't even actually feel any rubbing so I don't know if there is any so it's a lot more comfortable and it actually supports the pack and keeps the weight on your hips hip pockets or uh, waist uh, pockets what I've got in there I've got my compass in there a couple of spare little bits and that actually goes all the way to the back and it's a, a good thing because these actually you can use while you're wearing the pack with it being the stretch material the same as your side pockets and your beaver pocket this side I normally carry two or three camera batteries my bug net in there oh excuse me and any other little things I need and with it being stretched and it's on your hip you're not actually losing much of the pocket there when it wraps around but as, as you probably know with some of these when I've got the material again similar to the side pockets once you put it on it wraps around that material gets pulled tight so you can't really use the hip belt pockets because of that Let's give you a little bit closer look at them. So there's the pockets. One handed. Oops, got caught. The zips work. So that's it, uh, most of the outside. The hip belts, they did have which I've got in the side pocket here, which you could hold the um, loose strap that you don't use. But I found that as a pain, especially when I was adjusting it and doing it. So I just took them off. Another good thing I like about this pack is, I'll put it on and show you. With the hip belt, Oh, I'm going to have to adjust the camera so you can see. Yeah, your hip belt. A lot of the other packs you can buy now, you pull from the centre backwards. And I find that a pain because I can't get as much leverage. Yeah, this one, you pull from the back, pull forward. And that pulls it tighter, easier and it's a lot more snug and these I think I've only ha have to adjust them once in the morning after about half an hour of, uh, bush walk into an hour and that's it I don't have to touch them for the rest of the day they don't slip and like I said these hip belts they just wrap around my hips and they don't move they're really really comfortable I'm really surprised with it because I've used packs that cost a lot more money and they don't do anywhere near as good as this one. Uh, at the moment, if you're here in Australia, go to Survival Supplies Australia. Their price is uh, $80 cheaper than any anywhere else here in Australia. And because this is over the $75 mark, you'll get it shipped out to you for free. Or if you're here in Perth, you can drive down and arrange to pick it up. So I'll put a link down in the description box for you if you want to go and have a look. But that's where I got this from. Now the size of it, like I said, is a 40 litre. 
The only reason I've really got these on here is for my camera gear. And I've thrown my first aid kit in the outside to make it easier if need be. But as you can see, I've still got all this space in there to fit more gear in. So let's open it up and do my best to show you the inside. Oh, before I go inside, we've got the pocket at the top. Which, a lot of gear in there. Passage case, filter kit, wallet, spare pegs and uh, poop scoop. My little blower for the inflatable mat. That all came out of that single pocket at the top. But what you do put in here, it takes up the space inside the pack. Just be aware of that. But I don't find that a problem. Let's try and roll this back so you can see better. So there's that pocket. And when it's full, I just have it sitting on top. And you can see there, I've got all that space below, plus some more at the top to roll up. And the water, filter, uh, water hydration pipe comes through the top there, from the outside. Now, they don't have a strap. All I've got is a little power cord loop. I think that's just to keep the weight down. So I've decided a small carabiner. I softened up my uh, hydro pack and just bent that up to make it a higher point and now my carabiners can fit there nice and easy. This does not have a pocket for the hydration to sit in. It's just one open bag inside. I'm going to do that to try and show you better. So the bag's big enough to fit, I don't know, three, four litre hydration. So that's a two litre, and what's that? Halfway-ish. So easy fit a three, four litre in that. Let's undo that. The stiffer. isn't a plastic or metal one, it's like a high density foam, which, believe it or not, actually does a good job. A lot of these you get that thin plastic strip about a millimetre and sit in there and this is about nine, ten millimetres thick and it's really, really comfortable on my back, especially with that ribbon that got the wave. So going back to the hydration, because there's not a pocket, I use a uh, dry bag inside with all my stuff. That's actually, that's the Helicontex 35 litre dry bag fits in here. So to give you an idea how much will fit in the 40 litre section, I've just shoved a load of stuff in there. I do do 3x3 tarp. What's that? The Alton Goods Ground Bug Net. Uh, emergency bag, not the blankets, the actual bag that you get inside. A couple of freeze dried meals. The Alton Goods uh, actual uh, bathtub ground sheet in there. Snug pack jungle bla uh, blanket uh, bag, not blanket, jungle bag. What else is here? Oh, my change of clothes bag, emergency clothes. And what else is in that? Got something else in there, but yeah. Ah, oh, that would be my bivvy. The bivvy's in there, I think. Yeah. My special forces bivvy. I'm snug pack. Yep, that's in there too. So, 
change of clothes in there, my pillows in there, my sleep mats in there, a uh, Tyvek ground sheets in there. So all that fitted in there with room to spare. So the simple question is, could I recommend this? Like I say, I go by recommendations as in if I'm buying it. Now, I was surprised when I bought this pack how comfortable it is. Um, how much you can actually fit in there with these expandable pockets on the side and the beaver pocket on the back. The only thing missing is no lashing points on the bottom of this. I think maybe that's because it's the thinner Cordova fabric so it wouldn't take the actual pulling of it. But for their first semi lightweight I'll say because it's in between their tactical and the materials and the hikers it's quite impressive, or well, more than quite impressive, it's very impressive. Right, let's get this all this sewn back in. Tap. Jungle bag. It's giving it some structure so you can see it again. It looks like there's a waterproof film on the inside. The pack is, I'd say, about 99% waterproof. I said the zip may let a little bit in, your hydration port that may let a little bit in. But in general, your gear will remain dry in this as far as I've found. I've walked in rain with it without a cover over it and everything inside has been dry. None of this here has been wet. My jacket that I carry on top of that inside has been dry. So me, I'd buy it again. If I was going to recommend it to me, yep, yeah, I'd recommend it to me to buy it. And it's probably one of the most comfortable, if close to being the comfortable pack I've actually got. Uh, I'm lucky because I'm not carrying too much weight in it or too much bulk. So as long as I pack it properly, I forget I'm wearing it. It is it, that comfortable. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have and you're not already a subscriber please go down below and click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to that and select all click that thumbs up button and if you are already a subscriber again I thank you very much so until next time get out there have some fun and take care Good day. Good day. I'm Clive, and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today's video is about the Helicon Tech Summit 40-liter backpack. 